How's it going, folks? It's Lobo, and welcome back to House of the Dragon. This is episode two now. Last episode, we talked a bit about Game of Thrones, or I did specifically. And as I say with every new series, only the first episode is reserved for a lot of prejudgment talk, predictions, and anything and everything related to the content before I begin watching for the first time. So, of course, this means that is no longer going to continue. I'm just going to dive right into the next episode here. But before I get into any of that, I actually have two things I want to mention briefly. It's only going to be about a minute, so I'm just going to get this out there. Since this is the second episode, we're going to get the intro premiere, like the title card, the theme, the introduction that we always have with an opening show. And, of course, we know Game of Thrones. That is pretty much my favorite one of all time. I absolutely love the music in it and how it really gave you a sort of world view of Westeros and where things are. I mean, it was a geographic map. It really laid out the locations, but more importantly, it showed you where you were going to be visiting in the story and how dense and expansive that the world is. So I don't have any expectations for how this intro is going to be. I would imagine it's going to be something similar potentially different. I don't care if it's a knockoff, at least then if it was, it would be consistent with what we know because it's not like maps changed or the music has changed much because I'm still sure it's the same composer. I've been saying that and I don't think I'm wrong. And of course, on the other hand, as I said, it's just a map. And now the second thing I will say is that I'm aware we're going to be undergoing, I don't know if it's this episode, but it's going to be coming at some point this season. We are going to be undertaking a massive time jump. And I just have to say that has me a little worried. Not like, oh my God, the story's going to immediately turn bad. It's just personally for me, I've never been a fan of time jumps. If I can think of any sort of example of this the show vikings i don't know if you've ever seen it or i'm sure you've heard of it at some point i'm not going to get into plot specifics in case you want to watch it but during midway through the series they underwent a enormous time jump and in my opinion that's when the downfall of the show started to really begin so not the biggest fan of time jumps because i feel like it breaks up character development especially when you're immersed in the story and then all of a sudden you have intro to new characters or a character gets recast because their age is now different. And the latter is part of what I'm saying right now. The actress playing Rhaenyra is actually going to be a different actress now at some point. And the same goes along with her friends who I think is, it's like Allison with sent at the end. It's kind of like Alice sent a letter. So Allison, I think her name is, she's being played now by Olivia Cook. I mentioned that in the first episode. She's like the only other actress I knew or any actor or whatever character because there's a lot of new cast or new people that really haven't had the spotlight of like hollywood so to speak because a lot of these types of shows launch people in the stardom so a lot of people i have never recognized but she was the only really the only one because freddy player one this is the only thing i've seen her in so i'm like oh familiar face i guess so yeah that would have to mean rhaenyra is pretty young in this like teenage years i'm gonna assume because daenerys was played by amelia clark who was i think like 24 and daenerys was supposed to be like 16 or 17 in game of thrones i've always found that funny how they cast somebody super well not super old but older to play a younger character sort of like the memes with any netflix show is that like netflix's version of a high school student it's a hot 30 year old in real life. It's just, it's super weird how they do that. And I think the actress for Rainier in real life is like 22. I know she's older than me. So I was like, how is she playing a kid or, or a teenager or however old she's supposed to be? I just always found that funny and kind of weird how it's like, oh, we're just going to skip on casting actual. I don't know if it's because of like school complications, but they only cast like really young or 20s and 30s as a teenager. I just, I don't know. It's always weird. So as I just said, we're going to be undergoing a time jump at some point, which I'm not too happy with, but I'm just going to let it slide because I know we're supposed to dive into like the civil war and the war for succession and the crown. And this was just sort of like the introduction. Here's a brief history. So yeah, we're going to dive right in here. So let's see how this all plays out. I'm excited and we're going to get started here. And while I get this loaded up here, I will have to mention that of course it's going to Got to take me a few more episodes for me to memorize everybody's name because there's a lot of new names. And for the most part, I've gotten all of them, but there are still a few like here and there, like the Maester and some of the other people at the small council that I just, I just need to remember what their names are. Is this the... No, what? Why won't you let me watch it? Oh, okay. You click play, you dumbass. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Okay. It literally is the same intro. I said I'd be fine with that, so I'm not gonna backtrack on what I was saying. Okay, but it's not, it's not like a map. It looks like a castle. Ah, dude, nostalgia with this. Holy shit. 
Okay, I'm trying to figure out where are we. It looks like a bunch of crowns in the blood. <laughs> I don't know. King Viserys in his room was making something out of stone, like a giant castle or location that I I didn't quite recognize. I thought it was Dragonstone, but it looked far too large. So maybe this is his creation. Or maybe he was reminiscing about old Valyria. I don't know. I feel like I'm in an alternate reality. It's like you expect to see Game of Thrones and it's House of the Dragon with this music. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, as they were saying, the crab feeder. Crabs are so cute. Well, not when they do that. I don't want compensation. I want to seize the Stepstones by force and not the free cities. Who do you think provides them with their ships and tender? The king's own brother has been allowed to seize Dragonstone and fortify it with an army of his gold cloaks. Stepstones will be taken. In time. You have dragon riders, father. Send us. How dare his daughter speak? <laughs> it's ridiculous. At least the princess has a plan. Exactly. Why don't you take the princess to see about the new king's guard posting, Lord Commander? A fine idea, you. I like Rhaenyra. She reminds me, of, obviously, it would be Daenerys, but a mix of Arya and Daenerys with sort of principles about how she wants to break away from conformity or tradition. How many of these knights have combat experience beyond capturing poachers? Cole. I remember this guy. Dornish marches, princess. I fought for a year as a foot soldier against the Dornish incursion. I choose Sir Kristen Cole. Let's not be too hasty. My father should be defended by a man who's no real combat. Should he not? Can't argue with that. The Valyrian capital was built into a volcano, much like Dragonstone. It is old Valyria. Okay. Drees and provide the plans. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Stone Mason was built. What if you went to her? There are times when I would rather face the Black Dread himself than mine own daughter of fifteen. <laughs> That's what I talked about earlier. He said she's 15, but in real life, she's like older than me. She's 22 or 23 or something. He chose you for his heir. He didn't choose me. He spurned Damon. I want him to see me as new as little girl. When I wish to talk with him, his time must make the effort. Your Grace. What a location. Join our families. Wed our daughter, Lena. Unite the two great surviving Valerian houses. Interesting. You could not ask for a stronger match than Lena. I mean, it's all about alliances and it's all about producing heirs and shit. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God, what is that? Those maggots? Your Grace. The maggots will remove the dead flesh. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, I fucking hate maggots. Have you ever seen the Spawn movie and the clown eats a pizza with maggots on it? <laughs> I don't know why I remember that, but I was always disgusted by it. Combine the strength of our houses and demonstrate my reign's strongest days are ahead, not behind. You are the king. But I do not envy you. Well, at least he's honest. Oh my god. What was it like flying the Black Dread? You Valerians lost. I will give you many children of pure Valerian blood so that we might strengthen the royal line and the realm. Even though it's fantasy, it is like historically accurate in some sense. Makes me very uncomfortable. My father is a king. It is his duty to take a new wife and strengthen his life. Whether it's to my daughter or to someone else's, your father will remarry sooner than later. When I'm queen, I will create a new order. Hmm. Oh, I wish that could be you, Venera. But they bent the knee to me and called me heir to the throne. Do you remind your father's men of that as we carry their cups? Men will sooner put the realm to the torch 
can see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. Lord Corlys Velaryon has offered the hand of his daughter, the Lady Lena. Very strong match, Your Grace. I'm still ripping her nails. Your Grace, I've called a small council to an emergency session. I still can't tell if Otto is trying to get his daughter to sleep with the king. I sense like a weird feeling between them. Of Damon Targaryen, the Prince of Dragonstone, and rightful heir to the Iron Throne. Scoriodrome on Damon Latas. I mean, that's pretty much a huge fuck you that he stole his uh, supposed to be son's dragon egg, Jesus. Will you see the king tonight? If you wish it. That's a cool show. <laughs> oh, it's got like dragon claws or hands or whatever. That looked cool. Yeah, they've really fleshed out Dragonstone. Majority of this is a real location, which is very cool. Well, landscape-wise, you won't see a castle, but the landscape is pretty cool. Simply keeping with the traditions of my house, the same as my brother did for his heir. Those traditions are for the true-born children of royalty, not for bastards fathered on a common whore. You've come for the egg. Here it is. Are you mad? You've never survived this. Well, happily, neither would you. The tomb's violence here is to declare war against your king. Wonderful. Even if it ends in the death of your unborn child and its mother. That is escalating. Really cool shot, though. I was about to say, he, he only has the gold cloaks. He doesn't really have a big army, but I forgot he has that dragon with an insanely long neck. It's got very unique sounds. It's cool. Kind of a cute noise. Is that another one? Oh, that was cool. Just the fog spreading. I think the name is. Cyrax? It's like the golden dragon. Wow, that dragon is much larger. I mean, it, it makes sense. It's probably far older. Probably Damon's exact age. The reason that you were disinherited. If you wish to be restored as heir, you'll need to kill me hmm. I, I just love that shot. What if Damon and Rhaenyra marry and they share the throne? I don't know. I'm just spitting guesses right now. <laughs> Your Grace. The princess has returned from Dragonstone. Dragonstone? <laughs> he had no idea she left. It takes a while to get to Dragonstone from King's Landing, but when you're on the back of a dragon, entirely different story. You disobeyed me. You fled King's Landing without a word. You went to Dragonstone. I'm a treaty egg without bloodshed, a feat I'm not sure Sir Otto could have accomplished alone. Your mother's absence is a wound that will never heal. But I'm not alone in my grief. I wish I had known better what to say to you in the aftermath. I do not wish to make us estranged. You are the king. And so your first duty is to the realm. I have decided to take a new wife. Damn, he's really happy about this. To Lady Alison Hightower. Before spring's end. Oh, 
Okay. My house is Valerian, the greatest power in the realm. And I am your king. Nobody in this picture is happy besides Otto. <laughs> centuries my house had to scratch out an existence from the sea with grit and luck unlike every other lord of the realm i can say that i built my house's high seat with the strength of mine own back i've always thought of you and i as having been made from the same cloth who's he talking to damon ah oh, okay now this is scheming over too often this is how war start okay this is cool i will not have driftmark beggared while our king idles himself with feasts speak of my brother as i wish you will not damon's a very interesting character Oh, sh shit, it's over. What? Jesus, that was fast. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I was like, it, it looked like a mask, but also a wooden face at the same time. I don't know if... Well, Game of Thrones has magic, so I'm not going to be like, oh, is it magic or whatever? It's a potential possibility, so it might not just be a mask. Wow, it was a very fast episode. The things they're starting to brew, and I really like that. Oh, this gets exciting. As I said, I, I think Damon has a larger role to play in sort of like the succession of things like i feel like he's gonna be a long-term character and not be killed and be the back foot of history like i feel like for some reason he's gonna be there at the forefront of this time period that's just the sense i get and as i was saying a large part of it has to do with his character like he's very unique he was in the first episode i got the impression he's kind of a villain in some sense like he does bad things he sort of is sadistic in a way or or has enjoyment but then for examples that we've seen in that episode in episode one and in this episode he does love his family i don't think he'd betray or kill them as he said i can speak with my brother however i want but you will not like he, he seems protective and to love his family and i'm not quite sure where i can place him and like how i feel about him like i like him as a character and it, it, it's not exclusive to heroes like i, I enjoy villains ramsey cersei joffrey i might not like them as a person but damn is it fun to watch a villain just fuck up people's shit and just do evil things like it, it it's very entertaining to watch but damon is not quite there in the levels of sort of depravity and like really making you scream and be like yeah this person has no soul He's not quite there. I don't know if he will ever be there, but I can certainly see a bit of gray with him. Like, he's not good. He's not bad. I'm still undetermined, but I like that about him. I like that he's not one-dimensional and he's just like, oh, here's your set character. I like that you sort of have to look deeper into him to see, like, what is this guy thinking? What does he want? Because I still don't know him. It's it's fun to unravel the mystery of a person. So I'm really liking him, liking him excuse me as a character okay well as usual i went downstairs and because i have to do after i watch my reaction i need to like stretch and get up and do shit and then i get back to do my little discussion so if i don't remember the flow of things i just said after the episode i'm sorry because it's like it there's been time in between but i'm probably going to do like a refresher again with damon and sort of discovering uh or just trying to decipher rather where his motivations lie what is his sort of like goals what does he want to accomplish of course you can pretty much see that he would like to be the heir to the Iron Throne. I don't think he'd kill his brother for it, but he definitely wants to be the next in line, however that's going to unfold. Of course, it goes without saying we know how Targaryens are paired. It's inner, it's incest, it's inner workings of families, usually brother and sister. But in, um, but I think they also do cousins. And so I'm like, it might not be out of the question that there's the potential possibility that Rhaenyra and Daemon could like be paired. I was just thinking that during the episode. I'm like, imagine if this is how it all turns out because there has to be a Targaryen on the Iron Throne for it all for it to lead all the way to Daenerys in the flow of time. So there still has to be a Targaryen. And after Viserys is gone, then Rhaenyra would take over. And then it's like, who would she marry 
that is Targaryen or has Targaryen blood to continue the lines of Targaryen purity to where they're able to control dragons and have their iconic like silver white hair. So she could marry... God damn it, what's his name? The other house that sounds like Valerian, but it's like Valarian, Valarian, Valarian. And I think his name, it starts with a C or a K. It's like Chorus or Colus Valarian. The, the dude who's conspiring with Damon. I, I need to get these names down, but uh, she could marry his son because I think he has a son and a daughter. But for some reason, I'm thinking Damon will come out on top. So I'm like, maybe it would all work out if Rhaenyra and Damon just... I, I, it's their tradition. So if they're okay with it, what whatever. I, I It's definitely weird as hell. But even back in the day, in real history, they would wed cousins. And in their case, he's her uncle. It's kind of like John and Daenerys where she was his aunt, but he did not feel comfortable. I don't know how it's going to go in the books again. I'm trying to sort of like books, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. Boom, boom, boom. You're all three separate things. Uh, I'm trying to do that, I promise. But yeah, uh, so we had some more of that sort of like lineage stuff going on even as I'm talking about it, especially with the king because it's like, oh, he should remarry and then his sort of, he needs to marry somebody who presumably has Targaryen blood. That's why I'm a little bit like, he's going to marry Allison. I know that's what Otto wants because he's a little bit of a player. Like he wants to get shit done behind the scenes. Like he's kind of like this show's... Peter Baelish in a way like he's very he, he as, as Joker would say he's a schemer <laughs> I said it before he really is but at least Allison is somewhat of a better choice like age wise I know I think the actress in real life is 19 or 20 I know she's very close to my age I'm like I I do this like I like juggle around so you can never guess my age but based on how I said Rhaenyra is older than me in real life and the actress for Allison is pretty much my age or close enough you can kind of guess what age I am. But I, again, I, I think for show's sake, because they said Rainier is 15, that she was also like around there. She's only a few years older than 12, who is, who, which is the age of Lord Cole, something, something, his daughter, who he was going to marry, who he wanted him to marry. And that's what's going to start this sort of civil war. Or, well, as I mentioned beforehand, I know there's going to be a time jump. So I would imagine that this is like one of the many steps that gets to that point, but definitely trouble for now is brewing because we have the pirate guy who I, I don't know. He's the dude, the, the crab feeder dude who is starting shit and attacking Valeran, Valaren's ships on sort of like, I, I, I'm going to imagine it's the narrow sea because they said it's from the free cities across, which would be Bravos, Pentos, Valantis. I don't think Bravos is involved because they didn't name drop it. But he's doing that, and Chorus, Colas, Valarian, again, I'm going to have to get that name down properly. He was trying to sort of caution, like, hey, my house is under siege, and I want to attack them and deal with them. And then the king doesn't want to start a war. And then he's like, oh, we can cement our alliance by you marrying my daughter. And since King Viserys pretty much went behind his back with like, no, nope, I'm going to marry Otto's daughter. Now he went to Damon and they're in cahoots pretty much. So this is really going to escalate. And it's exciting because <laughs> this is like classic story to where it's just like, oh, now we can see where this is going to all lead to war, death and drama. Oh, it's all beautiful. So I'm excited for where this is going. And I also kind of feel bad for Viserys in a way because... He seems like a nice guy. I know he might be up to weird traditions because that, I mean, it was older days, so nobody would be questioning. Some people might frown at the sight of it, but it's all about duty and lineage and alliances. So he looks like a man that's just trying to do his duty, but I don't, I don't think he's a cruel guy. So I like Viserys. I like that there's like an aspect of humanity to him, but he's still trying to do what he's supposed to as king, which is making sacrifices, not like, I'm going to sacrifice people, but more so my own sort of my own sort of like principles or pride in a way, because I, I don't think he wants to marry a kid. And I don't think he wants to marry anyone else besides his first wife, who I would also imagine Emma was his sister, because again, Targaryen's marrying brother and sister. And uh, the whole I ordeal, it took me a second for it to like snap in my head, because I know Targaryens, how they get there. There was something going on with blood magic in the beginning, as he said, men trifled with terrible powers in order for dragons and them to like be side by side but the tradition of putting the egg 
with the baby so they sort of like grow up together and have that sort of so they have that emotional attachment slash bond it's very much like a wild animal that's like rescued kind of like a, you could imagine a bear or a tiger or a lion it seems unfathomable that this monster this predatory creature can get along with a human but if they're raised from their upbringing that's what happens like it's cool and it's, it's definitely scary but it's cool to see having like the handler with the lion and they hug and shit and you're like how is that a real thing that a lion is hugging a guy and they're all getting along but it all has to do with that emotional attachment so starting from the upbringing having the dragon egg in the cradle the dragon cradle idea is very cool and it makes sense but the fact that Damon stole Balon's egg uh, that was supposed to be Viserys' son if he lived is that I'm like, damn, that's quite the blow. There are the message that he's trying to deliver with that. But he gave the egg back after Rhaenyra pulled up on Cyrax, I believe, the golden dragon. And then uh, the red dragon with the enormously long neck for some reason who is much bigger because, as I said, with the dragon cradle idea, he would have to be about damon's age or a year less he was much bigger but i think his name is something axes Viraxes or cyraxes something axes not cyrax but Maraxes. i don't know and apparently there's nine or seven i think there's 17 in the book but nine in the show so if they are like here name all these dragons i'll be like shit so a lot of names for me. I have a lot of homework to do on these names. But yeah, I really enjoyed this episode. And as I said, a lot of it just had to do with sort of like lineage and alliances. And that's all the stuff that I like. And that's what I really loved about Game of Thrones was, yes, it was a fantasy. And we had a lot of violence and cool shots and this building, cinematography, soundtrack. But what made Game of Thrones special, especially in the early seasons, was this political drama and all these people plotting against one another to seize control because they all have the same goal but how they get there is a very exciting story to be told so it, it was reminding me of that like the end goal is in sight the iron throne and the never-ending cycle and it's just it's fun i like that so i'm looking forward to next episode this one flew by i mean when you enjoy something it flies by but i really felt like this episode was short I don't know if it was shorter than the previous one, but it, it, it felt short. I think it was like 50 something minutes, but it really did flew by. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have anything that I missed or you want to point something out to me, feel free to. Because again, I'm sort of getting back into my knowledge of Westeros. And of course, this story at large, it's entirely new to me. So it's going to take me a while for me to be comfortable with my lore and knowledge of it. I would also like to mention, of course, you can find a couple more Daredevil reactions. Originally, I was going to do one before this, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to release a season finale after this. And I said on Monday, I would have the X-Men reaction out. But uh, unfortunately, timing wise, that is not going to work out. So I'm just going to stop giving dates. But I will say 100% this week, hiccup, X-Men The Last Stand reaction will be out. And then, of course, next week, the next one and the next one and the next one, one per week. But I'm going to stop giving dates. I'm going to work with my own schedule and try to just be like, okay, here's a number of reactions that are coming out in said week. So again, this week, you can find my third X-Men movie reaction. The previous two are in my movie playlist, which is in the description. So hope you guys are looking forward to anything Daredevil movie reaction or the next episode. So yeah, stick around. Again, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys thought. And of course, until then, I will catch you folks in my next reaction.